Welcome to Shootin' Straight. I'm your host, Ken Buck. In today's highly partisan environment, political adversaries often minimize each other's arguments by labeling motives rather than engaging in constructive dialogue. For the next 30 minutes or so, I invite you to join me as we cut through the political noise and learn about what inspires our guest and about her experiences in China and why she is so passionate about the freedoms we enjoy in the United States, especially our First Amendment rights. Today, we will explore her work as an advocate for a free press and the newspaper she founded, The Epic Times. It is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Dana Chang to the show. Are you ready to start shooting straight? Well, yes. Good. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Dr. Chang, I want to talk about so many things with you, but let's, uh, let's just uh, summarize and, and ask one really uh, quick question, and that is you had a passion for uh, this newspaper that, that you helped start, the Epic Times. Well, why? Uh, because I grew up in China, and this is some, an opportunity that we don't have when, when I was in China. And especially for a lot of Chinese people, um, they don't have access to an independent media. And all the media in China are state-owned, which means it's a Communist Party-owned. And Communist Party openly said media need to be the mouthpiece for the Communist Party. And so for Chinese people, they deserve the opportunity to know what's really going on. They deserve the opportunity to have uncensored like, information. Let's talk about your past in, in China, because I think it's fascinating. You and I have had a chance to talk a few times, and, and I've followed you and, and, and the newspaper uh, a good bit. But uh, you grew up during the Cultural Revolution. Uh, Mao Zedong was the leader of the, of the Communist Party in China. Well, what was that experience like? That was in the 60s. Um, my father, both my parents were architects. Uh, my father, being an intellectual, it was labeled as a bad person. And so he was... When, when you say he was labeled, he was labeled by the Communist Party. Communist Party. You know, all the intellectuals were bad people. They need to be reformed, as the Communist Party say. So he was put on stage and the entire um, company and people were like shouting slogans, humiliating him. Uh, I was watching that. I was like very confused. I was five year old. And I asked my mother, my father is a good person. Why is this happening? And so very soon, both my parents were sent to the countryside, very remote. Um, deep mountain, they were forced to do like labor work. They have to learn how to plant their own vegetable and how to work in the rice field. And they have to cut wood to um, cook. Uh, so it's, it's a whole set of labor work. They have never been trained and to do and do not able to handle that kind of a labor work. So it was very, very hard for them. And, but as the Communist Party said, uh, these intellectuals need to be reformed through this process. And it's, it's not much different from the labor camp. So, so when you say that they were sent, they were sent by the Communist Party. Yes. Were they sent after a trial? Had they committed a crime? Had they been accused of a crime? Were they, were they given a lawyer to defend themselves? Oh, no, no. At that time, Every, anything that um, Chairman Mao say, everyone follow. So when Mao say, uh, you need to go to uh, the countryside to, to reform yourself, and they just went. They just went. And nobody would say no. Nobody would dare to say no. Why? Uh, it's a regime that... Uh, Nobody can say no to Communist Party. Did they use force? I think the propaganda was so strong and so terrifying. Without the force, people follow. So yeah. they, they used propaganda through the press. Yes. And, and other means. Yeah. Um, did they also use guns? Did they also use the, the threat or actual imprisonment of people who disagreed with them during the Cultural Revolution? 
Yes, actually, during the entire ruling of the Communist Party, and they say they have two weapons. One is gun, another is a pen. Pen is the propaganda. So um, each time they won the campaign, like have a p political persecution, they use uh, media to, to do hate campaign. Like a certain group is really bad and they, they need to be killed or they need to be sent to the countryside. And if anyone say anything that they don't like, then they can be in labor camp or they can be in jail. Um, my uncle was labeled as the uh, right list. So he was in labor camp for years. And what he did that upset the Communist Party was um, he complained about cafeteria's food. And he was very educated, so his entire life, he couldn't have a, a career. My grandma owned one acre of land. So when Communist Party took over, she was labeled as a landlord. So landlords and business, business owner and rich people, they were bad people. And peasants and workers, they were good people. That's how communists educate people. So their education is they divide the society. They turn one group against another group, and they call it class struggle. But it's made up by them because they want to overthrow the whole system. So they rally the peasants and uh, workers and say, oh, you are exploited by them. So you should like overthrow them. So many landlords and uh, business owners and rich people were killed. And of course, their properties were taken away. So my grandma owned one acre of land. Uh, my grandpa worked very hard and bought the land for her. And then she became, she was labeled a landlord. So she had to clean, she was forced to clean public bathroom and confess sin in front of Mao Zedong's poster every day. So my father was sent to remote countryside. I followed them. So I was helping them to carry water from the river and the cut wood to cook. Um, I was very young, so I, I really didn't know how hard it was on them until years later. And, and uh, when you talked about your uncle, again, was he ever uh, charged with a crime uh, other than writing a letter and, and and was he encouraged to write this letter? Was there was there? Uh, yes, yes. Tell me about that. Yeah, actually, there was a time Communist Party encouraged people to say, if you have a op different opinion, if you have any complaint, you, you should say it out. We welcome that. So my uncle was very careful. He only dared to talk about the cafeteria, but even that, you don't need to write a letter. You just say say anything. People around you will report on you, your labor, your, your, your even family members. There's nothing that can be sacred. So uh, he, he suffered a lot and stayed at the countryside all his life. He was very educated. So the, the crime that your grandmother committed was her husband, your grandfather, worked hard, saved money, invested in an acre of land, and, and was this in rural China? This wasn't in downtown Beijing. Uh, no, rural China. Rural very, China. Very, yeah, countryside. One acre of land. One acre of land. And the crime that she committed was owning one acre of land. Yes. Anything you own, if you own land, if you own business, you're bad people. That's how communists, you know. And it's how they divided the country and how they kept power by dividing the country. And they keep saying this is a class struggle, but they they divide it and and turn the group against another group. Before they did that, the society was running very well. China has a five thousand year history, and it had great civilization. And it's the communists 
is a whole system cloned from Soviet Union. And let's talk about your education. Mm -hmm. uh, you went to school in, in China. Yes. During the Cultural Revolution, we were not encouraged to study. And we were sent to like factories to learn from workers. We were sent to the field to learn how to plant vegetables. So in school, libraries were shut down. We were not allowed to read any book before communists took over. So anything, classic literature, anything, we were not allowed to read. And translated book from the West, we were not allowed to read. So the only book we could read were textbook that put together by the Communist Party and what they allow us to read a little bit. And so a lot of time we were like working in the factory or in the field. And later on, like um, a few years before I graduated from the high school and China started to open a little bit. Was uh, Mao Zedong still in power at that point? Mao Zedong passed away. Okay. So and, he, and who was the new leader? Uh, Deng Xiaoping, actually. So um, China was at um, edge of collapsing economically. And that time, uh, China built a relationship with the United States. And, and so it was the opportunity for China to work with the United States and to be more open and uh, to get reformed. And so then the opportunity started that um, students can take exam and go to colleges. So uh, my cousin that some years, like five years older than me, they couldn't get to the college. Okay. No matter how good they are, they couldn't. They don't have the opportunity. It's saved for workers. <laughs> and, and, and while you were growing up, mm -hmm. did you ever get any information from the West about what life was like outside China? Uh, we were told by uh, communist media that communists provide the best life. And people in the West, they suffer. And only the capitalists, they exploit people and only a small group they live a life and uh, at the expense of other people and ordinary people suffer people in taiwan suffer pay people in like american suffer only communists can provide a good life to us so we had no idea how people live outside china it was a total closed isolated society okay was, did you ever have any exposure to, uh, I think they call it Radio Free America, uh, or any uh, news from, from the West, or any of your relatives have that exposure? Yes, actually, um, I had a friend who uh, listened to Voice of America, and he she listened um, like under blanket <laughs> because it's considered a crime. <laughs> under her blanket in her yeah, home. Yeah, okay. yeah. So <laughs> it's considered a crime and, and she won't let anyone know. And so sometimes she she told me what's going on. Uh, and then uh, after we got to the college, we could use a radio and trying to get the a voice of America, but it was greatly interfered. Like, um, China like send certain signal to interfere the reception of it. And in this, uh, when you graduated from college, w what did you decide to do uh, after that? We graduated from college in China. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had a alumni that's a few years older than me. Uh, he came to the United States at first, and then he wrote a letter to to me and say, um, "I have been cheated." And what did he, he said, mean? He said, it's such a shock. It's, it, I have a great culture shock because what he experienced in America is so different from what uh, he learned when he was in China, right? And he actually is from a very high-level Communist Party official family. And so for him, his life compared to other ordinary Chinese people is 
quite good. But for him, it's like, oh, people live such a good life here, and it's a normal society here, and uh, I've been cheated. And so I, uh, I wanted to come to America and have a good education. Um, and, what did you, and where did you go? Um, I went to Ohio University and uh, had a full scholarship. I got my PhD in physics. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity. What did you do uh, after your education? Um, I, I entered into... Uh, insurance industry I have been actually for many years um, and then uh, I joined my friend and to start the Epoch Times. Great tell us about that. It was year 2000. Um, actually in 1999 the Communist Party started persecution of Falun Gong. Uh, Falun Gong is a traditional meditation it teaches five sets of meditation exercises, and it teaches the principle of uh, to be truthful, to be compassionate, and to be tolerant. So in daily life, you, you conduct yourself according to this principle. And this is a, a, actually a mind and body exercise. And so when you follow the principle of Truthfulness, compassionate, and tolerant. Um, you, you, your exercise will be more effective. Your mind is clearer. Uh, you can improve yourself and refine your body. And so, um, it's a traditional Chinese concept. It's called a cultivation. You know, you elevate yourself through cultivation, because it's a traditional concept. It got spread very fast in China. It was first introduced to the public in 1992. Within seven years, throughout China, there were about uh, 100 million people practicing. So basically, in every park, uh, in the morning, in the evening, you see people had group exercise. And of course, a lot of people exercise at home. Well, why was that a threat to the Chinese Communist Party? Well, um, actually, at the beginning, the government supported that because they sent the agent to mix into the group and trying to find out what's going on. And there were a lot of like um, senior ladies and trying to improve health. And all they were talking about is how to improve my xin xin myself and my, my moral standard so my exercise can be more effective. So they couldn't find anything wrong. And they later they find out that actually it saved a lot of money in medical care, which is at the expense of the government. So the premier was very happy. It saved money. Um, but at that time, the leader of the Communist Party is named um, Jiang Zemin. Uh, he was very jealous about the popularity of Falun Gong. And many high-level Communist Party members, uh, officials, were practicing. And even generals in the military were exercising and following Falun Gong. And they he was very upset. It's like, oh, this is more popular even than Communist Party. And of course, Communist Party, like leader like him, he was not elected and uh, he was not popular. And Communist Party's uh, alien ideology is not a communist, it's not a Chinese culture. It's kind of uh, imported from Soviet Union. So, um, and Communist Party always live in fear because it, it always feel like they're not accepted by by the people and it, it's against humanity it's against the human nature so it's at odds in er, with people in every society so it, it feels insecure and they always pick a different group to persecute and this time they picked the Falun Gong Wait, when you started the Epic Times did you go back to China and recruit people to help gather information for your newspaper. Yes. So uh, when persecution started, there was so much propaganda against Falun Gong. They fabricated material uh, stories and and started this hate campaign and want to turn the entire society against Falun Gong. It's too much lie. So um, some friend and 
and I we feel oh it's the time we start the independent media and I went back to China secretly and uh, I contacted my friend there and so we organized the first group of reporting so the first group of reporters and editors were actually based in China and very soon um, they were all arrested uh, about a dozen of them because they were reporting on activities going on in China. Yes, exactly. And, and that was being published by your newspaper here in the United States. Exactly. And exactly. what happened to them after they were arrested? Well, some were sentenced three years or five years. Some were sentenced for 10 years. Oh, and when you say sentenced, to prison. To prison, to prison. And so one, uh, one member that sentence for 10 years, he was forced to sit on a small bench in the same cell for seven years. By the time he was released, he couldn't walk. Um, another person who was uh, sentenced for 10 years, he was first um, um, interrogated for seven days, seven nights. Um, they didn't allow him to sleep. And then he was locked in a small dark room for months and months. Uh, so what, what year was this? Uh, that's year that's the beginning of um, 2001. Okay. Okay. And so your newspaper, the Epic Times, uh, continues to grow here in the United States. Yes. And, yes. And what's been the reaction from communist China to your newspaper covering stories about communist China? Oh, they were so scared. Uh, and very soon, um, Apple Time has been the top newspaper on their desk every day. They want to find out what Apple Time is saying about us. It's like they cannot cover their crime so easily, right? It's out you cover open. up their crimes so easily? It, you mean? Yeah, we expose the human rights violation there. And they always use lie to cover their crime. And now it's exposed. They are very scared. They're very scared. So um, they try to, they have sent people to steal our paper. And uh, when we have advertisers and um, put ads in our paper, they will get calls and they will be pressured. The, the advertisers would get calls. Yes, yes. And, um, and, and so the uh, when you say they would send people to steal your newspapers, that's happening in the United States. Yes. Not not in China, but but they have people... The Chinese Communist Party has people working in the United States to try to undermine your newspaper. Yes, yes. And how do you know this? Um, it's a systematically and and systematically happening. Um, and actually, consulate have a lot of connection uh, with the local Chinese community, uh, and uh, some operate as their agent. Yes. Oh. So, but you've heard from advertisers, for example, that they have been contacted by someone yes. asking them not to advertise in your newspaper. Yes, yes. And so. and what has the effect been on your newspaper? Oh, um, it grows so fast. People love it. Um, China, some people in China know how to get around the, the digital censorship and read our website. And they say, oh, it really opened their eyes. They send us news clips. They tell us information that no other media will report. Um, and, um, and here, it, people who left China, they contribute uh, content to us because we are such a rare platform and for independent voice. And for Chinese people, so they, they love us. Sometimes Chinese people travel to America and they tell us, you are the backbone of our Chinese people. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And, and the, the reaction from people on the left in America, what has that been like to your newspaper? Oh, yeah. Recently, they have been writing hippies and uh, a lot of lies. And they don't care to check with us or they don't care to find out whether it's true or not. It's, it's clearly agenda driven. Um, and this is such a surprise. For us, we fled communist and we thought this is a free country and we can enjoy the freedom 
of speech, freedom of press, and we can provide an, a voice that people can choose. You know, people can choose what to 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 read and what to listen, right? Um, but this hit piece uh, obviously trying to suppress our voice, and this is such a surprise. And we never thought that this kind of censorship, this kind of a communist style suppression, and can can follow us in America. And we feel this is the capital of the free world, and and this is such a surprise. So the function of communist media first it lie. It purposefully lie and mislead people because it's all serving communist purpose. It's not a free press. And it divides, it, it divides society. It always turn one group against another group. So it's a hate campaign. And it also has a su purpose to suppress because it will never allow a different voice which will tell people to choose. Dr. Chang, you were talking about what's going on with the Epic Times now. Mm. Uh, do you feel like there are uh, forces at work in the United States that are trying to limit your access to information or delegitimize the Epic Times as a press outlet? Yes, um, there are uh, left media like New York Times and uh, Atlantic and NBC. They will try, they put a lot of effort to write a hit piece to discredit us, um, and and it's such a surprise. And uh, uh, we saw that this is a free country, and people respect each other's speech, and people respect each other's uh, right to to do uh, media and respect different voices. But obviously, they are trying to suppress our voice. It's uh, agenda-driven. And also the big tech, the Facebook and YouTube, they, they give us a hard time. They, they, you know, they, they really want to suppress our growth. So uh, this, is, uh, this is such a surprise that this is happening in America. And uh, my friend is saying, um, we saw the China is going to become America, but instead America is becoming China. In what way? Because this kind of a, uh, suppressing the voice. Suppressing the voice? Suppressing the voice, because this is a, a basic element in the free world. And freedom is like uh, free air. You, you, need to, you need to have f fresh air. <laughs> Oh, so if we cannot have the freedom of press here, uh, where can we go now? So it's a little bit different. Uh, in fact, it's a lot different than the Cultural Revolution. There aren't people with guns that are shutting down newspapers. There aren't mm. people that are uh, putting people in prison for the simple crime of, of owning an acre of land or mm -hmm. writing a letter about bad food in the cafeteria. But it is similar in the sense that uh, the newspaper outlets on the left uh, aren't disagreeing with a story that you wrote, the facts in a story that you wrote, but they're disagreeing with the motives for the story that you write. They're disagreeing with the sources. Uh, they're disagreeing with the legitimacy of, of a story and trying to uh, convince people in this country that you are not a legitimate newspaper. Is, is that a fair way of characterizing uh, the differences? Oh, well, um, I feel it's more and more like a communist style media. Communist style media lie, divide, and it suppress. It's, it's more and more like a communist style. And it's scary that this is happening in America. Okay, and so uh, tell us a little bit about where the where you want to take the Epic Times and and where the newspaper uh, plans to go in in the future. Um, our staff sacrificed a lot uh, for this paper, and a lot of our staff right now, uh, their family members are harassed in China. It's a lot of effort to provide this information to serve the public. We will continue and what we are doing. And the more hit pieces we get, the more it explained there's a need for us. And they are scared. They are scared of independent information. And when you say they're scared, who, who is scared? 
and those who try to suppress us. And and who do you believe those people are? Well, some extreme communist style people. In, in the United States? Yes. Okay. Dr. Chang, I want to ask you one question that I ask all my guests at, at the end, and that is, if loving this is wrong, I don't want to be right. What is this? Um, freedom. And, and why is that? Um, I grew up in a country that uh, with no freedom. Uh, I came here with great effort and I enjoy the freedom here so much. And only in America, we can build a free press like this. Uh, I'm so grateful for the freedom here. Thank you. And, and thank you for joining us and, and sharing your heart and your life experiences. I don't think that many Americans truly understand what it was like growing up during the Cultural Revolution and, and the things that you've seen. You are a, a living piece of history, and it's very important for Americans to, to recognize uh, what, what we have and, and how special it is here. So thank you very much. It's an honor to be your guest. I want to thank Dr. Dana Chang for shooting straight with us. And I want to thank you for listening today. I hope this program has been informative, enlightening, and uniting. As Americans struggle with the difficult issues facing our country, we're reminded that good policy is the result of open, thoughtful discussion. God bless you. And remember to always shoot straight.